What's up YouTube, it's Dennis Films here with another video and today we're doing a Q&A. So I guess let's just get into it. A few days ago I took to social media and then asked y'all if y'all had any questions that y'all needed me to answer uh, that I would make a video about it. And well, today's that video. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna get in, no BS in a round. Let's get to question number one. Question number one comes from Jamal the photographer. Appreciate you, Jamal, as usual. How do you keep your color grades natural, but also punchy when it comes to color? Do you grade in Premiere Pro or Lightroom? Well, I'm gonna start off backwards. So I do color grade in Premiere Pro. I used to color grade in Lightroom, and then just got tired of the whole process from go bouncing one software to the next. So I came back to Premiere Pro. Basically on the punchiness and all that good stuff, the first thing I do is crush the blacks. And then the next thing I do is I take to individual colors and change the hue, saturation, and vibrance of each individual. But I'm more of a mild tone guy. So I really enjoy like natural, but at the same time, it's not like in your face. That's how I do it. I individually tweak colors. And then at the same time, I'll go into the mid-tones and highlights and then play around with those to get the you know preferred color that I want. So it's really, color grading is not easy, and I'll never say that because it's a process of learning, whether it's photos or video, it's just something that you gotta experiment with, and I promise as time goes on that you'll catch on to little things as you go that make just a slight difference, but over time build up and really just can separate your color grade from a lot of people. By the way, I wanna thank everybody for asking these questions. Uh, Y'all are awesome. Second question is from Sabine. I'm so sorry that I messed your name up and anybody that I'm about to um, uh, say just disregard that it's, I apologize I know who you are though I, I know you from Instagram so thank you for your support the question is any new LUT presets on the way yes very soon on the way but I do have a few more so check the link in the bio second question is what laptop slash computer do you recommend for editing flat 4k Sony footage well with laptop there's only one specific laptop and I can't remember the name of it uh, it's actually something my fiance uses and I used to use but the only thing bad about it is the, the colors on this uh, on the display are just not accurate I've even tried color correcting it with I think it's the spider something like that and try to calibrate the screen it just didn't work sent mine back but she still has hers uh it runs smoothly with 4k and i believe it was like 1300 so it is really cheap i'll leave the link in the description below um for you but as far as computer now i have a custom built laptop and i don't remember all the parts names but i still got the boxes and i'll also leave a link to all the parts below but as far as the motherboard this is it I use, it's the Asus Rogue Maximus X Hero with the built-in Wi-Fi. Um, this is, you know, I really don't know how to judge a motherboard. I just, it works. So that's what I use as far as motherboard. And as far as processor, I use the Intel Core i7 uh, 8700K Unlocked. Uh, this I really like, but I think I'm gonna upgrade to the i9 just because the future proof, because I plan on getting eventually Canon C200 or RED, or if Sony will ever come out with the A7S III, I wanna get that. But anyways, that's the processor. As far as RAM, I use the Vengeance. I have used 32 gigabytes. Uh, that will also be upgraded to 64 eventually. As far as memory, I use the Samsung 970 Evo M.2. Now this, this is where it's at because the transfer speeds on this are insane. Also, my case is Corsair, yeah, and my graphics card is NVIDIA 970, which is not good. I do recommend going at least a step up. Now let's get on to the next question. Next question comes from Freddie Breeze. Freddie Breeze, I appreciate you. Any updates to your camera settings? The only thing I've updated on my camera settings would have to be my picture profile and it's still pp7 the only thing i changed was the detail level to negative seven and that's pretty much it uh, nothing else has changed oh and freddie also has another question how do you get 1080 footage sharp like 4k when doing b-roll uh pretty much 
what it comes down to is make sure your ISO is not cranked all the way up as well because that will deteriorate your quality of your image. Make sure that your focus is on point, your lighting is good, and that will pretty much dictate it. I mean, the 1080 on the Sony A65 and A63 is just not that great, but it's usable. It's just not going to match the 4K exactly. But those those few tips right there will definitely help you in making sure you're getting the most out of your 1080. And the next question is from Tay Savage. Appreciate you, Tay. How to get clients, how do you get clients as a new production company? Weddings, music videos, commercials, etc. So the most important thing is having a portfolio. Your portfolio is your selling point. It's to prove to your future client what you can do, what you're capable of. Now to build a portfolio, you gotta do stuff free. And no one likes hearing the word free unless you're the, on the other side receiving the free stuff. But yes, you got to give free work. So what I did was I did music videos for cheap. But let me say this. I was already a photographer, photographer at the time. So I had a little portfolio. What I did was I just charged very low. I think it was like 50 bucks or 75 bucks. Did a bunch of music videos, built up that portfolio and then also went into weddings did a i think i did a, f a few free ones and then you know did a few hundred bucks and then eventually it got to a few thousand dollars same thing with commercials you just got to go and network so you need to go meet people you need to contact businesses your local artists and just say hey i'm just getting into filmmaking i would love to shoot your next project for free no strings attached and just so i can add it to my portfolio and i promise you you shouldn't have any trouble but i wouldn't go to like your top local artists or your top local businesses or anything like that, you need to start low. Start with a guy that's just starting out where y'all are kind of on the same page with each other and you can build from there. And then you can build a relationship as well with your clients. Relationship building with clients is number one important. So the next question is from Nola Did It. Congratulations Nola for becoming a full-time filmmaker. That is awesome. I know the feeling is great. Just keep crushing it, man. Our number one question is taxes. It's a very great question that I don't think enough people talk about. Because when I first got into it, it's stressful. But it's really not, as long as you keep up with it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get a CPA. The way to find a CPA is you can talk to any local business or anybody that's doing what you're doing in your area and see who they use and kind of go there and see what information the CPA gives you. So with taxes, I, I deal with my CPA once a year and then throughout the year I do QuickBooks and QuickBooks is something that's on my phone that I can constantly, you know, any transaction is connected to my bank account. So any transaction through my business bank account, any type of swipe a card, spend money, receive money, it shows up on QuickBooks and then I tag it. It's very simple. It makes life easier with taxes. And then you can also snap pictures of your receipts. It just makes things so much easier when keeping up with it throughout the year. And then it can tell you your quarterly and then you can just write a check to the IRS. Hey, take my money, you know. Yes, find a CPA, that should be number one get the advice from them now i'm not a financial advisor in any way a few things that you can definitely write off with business is business miles course equipment uh props from what i'm told by my cpa do not count anything that's only has a one-time use you cannot write off um anything that has to do with expenses in your business period monthly expenses oh yeah also i will be making up a new video for my new rig for the a6500 and that is gonna be awesome. Uh, I think y'all might like that. Uh, that's coming out very soon. Oh, we, a question from Sung Kim. Uh, did you leave the picture profile as is? Just as long, okay, I already answered that. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment. And then also, if you got any other questions below, if you got any other questions, please comment below and I will make sure to make another one in the future. Have a great day. Keep crushing it. Create dope shit. That's all I got to say. Peace.